What's up guys? Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, I'm really excited because I finally get to cover a rendering program that I've wanted to cover for a very long time. So as many of you know, there's a lot of different kinds of rendering programs out there. Well, one of the big ones, one of the industry leaders is Lumion. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to make a video just kind of walking you through the basics of using Lumion and just kind of showing you where everything is. There is so much stuff in this program. I'm not going to be able to cover it all in one video or even a couple videos. There's going to be a bunch of videos on this. I'm super excited about it. A lot of those will go over on my rendering channel, which is youtube.com slash the rendering essentials. So make sure you go over there as well and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the Lumion tutorials. Um, I'm super excited. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right. So the first thing you're going to notice when you open up Lumion is the first thing it does is it does a hardware check. I mean, and the reason for that is because this uh, basically displays a ton of geometry in and you have to have a computer that has enough power to actually handle that. So you can go to the Lumion website, uh, lumion.com slash system dash requirements to see the system requirements. But basically what it's going to do is it's going to run a check when you first um, when you first run the program. And you can actually see more information about that by clicking on this little bar down here at the bottom of the page. And so if you click on that, you'll see that uh, basically this will show you where your CPU and uh, where your graphics card line up. Up. and you can see how I'm in the green up above here so I'm good to go but just be aware of this and if you're way down in the red on this you may need to consider upgrading your computer upgrading your hardware in order to run all of this in this case I'm good so we're gonna go ahead and um, get into it so the first thing you're gonna notice when you pop up Lumion is you're gonna get this page and this page has three tabs so the first tab the start tab gives you options for blank templates that you can download as well as some notes on some new stuff that's going on with Lumion. Um, but in this case, um, in addition to the blank templates, there's also a number of example files. And I absolutely love this about this program because it allows you to jump in and start messing around and learning the settings without having to model a super complex model where uh, you have to model it first and then you have to figure out what you did wrong and all of that just to start learning the program. In this case you can just pick one and you can just jump right in. And then the last option is to load a scene. So if you have a scene that you've created before you can load that from right here. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go with the beach house model that's found right in the middle. And this is going to go in and it's going to load the scene. And depending on your computer speed, this could take a little while because um, it's loading everything up and getting everything ready to go. And that actually came in pretty quickly. And so the first thing you're going to notice right off the bat is this has everything kind of built in. So it has the house, it has moving people, it has moving birds, all sorts of stuff. It's also got plants in the corner. So all of this stuff's already been added. You can see how the water animates. So this is a really good starting point for you to figure out how everything works. And you can start flying around as soon as you come in here. And one thing to notice is if you click off of this, like I'm clicking on my other monitor, and you'll notice the bird is stopping. The reason the bird is stopping is because I'm clicking on my other monitor. Um, when I click back in the Lumion window, everything starts up again. And so the first thing you're going to need to know is this is called build mode. So this is the main area where you build your actual rendering and scene. And you can see how everything's rendered in real time. Like I can turn and look at different things in my model in real time. And so the first thing we need to know is navigation. And Lumion is controlled much the same way that a gaming engine is controlled, meaning you use the W, A, S, D keys to move forward, back, left, and right. And in addition, you move up and down by tapping the E and Q keys. E is down, Q is up. So you can see how I can fly up or down using those keys. So th those will let you kind of move around. The other thing you're going to want to know how to do is how to look at different things. And so a great way to do this accurately is to hold the right mouse button down. So if you hold the right mouse button down, you can see how your camera basically looks wherever you center or wherever you drag your mouse. So by doing that, you can uh, look at whatever you want by holding that right mouse button. And probably the best way I've found to navigate is to hold the right mouse button while you're moving around. That allows you to center your camera on something within your model. So I'm holding the right mouse button down and you can see how I can kind of move my view around based on where the center point is within my model. 
So now that you know a little bit about how to navigate and how to get started, I want to talk a little bit more about some of the different functions. And I just want to say this is going to be very brief because there are so many functions in Lumion. But in this case, um, I want to go ahead and give an overview. And then I'm going to be covering those more in depth on my other channel, which is youtube.com slash the rendering essentials. So if you want more Lumion tutorials, make sure you subscribe over there as well. And so the first thing I want to do is give you kind of an introduction to what all these buttons and parts and pieces do. And we're going to start off in the lower right hand side of the page. And so on the lower right hand side of the page you've got a number of different options. And uh, the first thing to notice if you ever get lost, if you mouse over this question mark button, it's actually going to show you um, a bunch of different information about what all the buttons do. So if you ever get lost, just mouse over the question mark. And so in the lower right hand corner, these are where your options are for exporting different things. So like for example, let's say I wanted to export a view of, or export an image of this view. You could click on the photo button to export a still image of this view. And notice that you can actually fly around in the photo export as well. And there's a ton of different effects and different things you can do with different views. You can see how you can save different camera views down here below. So some of these are presets. So you can really kind of see what the settings are. Um, and there's some pretty amazing images in here. This one in particular is cool because it's using a effect that actually adds kind of a sketchy style to this so almost like a painted and also sketchy edges style so you can create all of those different views within Lumion and we'll talk about all of these in the future but you can click on this button right here to render your different photos to export those um, so in addition there's also options for movies so there's actually a movie editor in here and uh, you can actually play the clips and preview them so there's some built-in clips that give you kind of an idea of what can be done here as well and you'll see that the effects can also be applied within these uh, actual video clips so you can export video clips you can also export 360 degree panoramas so as you can see there's a lot of different options for getting your stuff out of Lumion and into um, images and other formats that you need and so one of the things I want to know is if you ever want to get back to build mode you just click on this little person right here with the shovel that'll take you back to build mode and out of any of these menus that you have in here before here's the save button that's important for saving your um, saving your different scenes and so now we know how to move around and how to export things now let's take a look at all this stuff on the left hand side of the screen all this stuff on the left hand side of the screen is really more designed to help you with uh, with uh, adding and adjusting things within your scene. And so basically what these are gonna do is there's gonna be four different tabs, and those tabs affect what you see at the bottom of the page. So you can see how as I click between these, I have different options down here. And so we'll just run through these real quick. Like I said, I could do like multiple videos on each one of these. So I'm just gonna give you a very, very high level view of what some of them do. So the first one is the weather. And what the weather does is that actually allows you to affect your sun height, where your sun is, which is gonna affect all of your shadows and different things like that. You can see how these all adjust um, just by clicking and moving these sliders. You can also adjust the number of clouds in the sky. And part of that is this type that you have selected, which we'll talk about in a second. You can also adjust the brightness of the sun by using this slider. And so for the clouds, if you click on this type button, you'll notice that there's a bunch of different kinds of clouds in here that you can select. And as you select these different clouds, you'll notice that the look that's created up here is a little bit different. And then you can see how you can adjust these using the sliders. So there's a lot of um, a lot of adjustability just in the amount of clouds that you can put within your uh, images. So that's kind of an overview of the weather tab. The landscape tab, the landscape tab is a lot of fun. So this is one of those tabs that I think I could probably just play around with and just make a video playing around with this. Because you can use this to like raise and lower terrain. So if you wanted to make like a hill or something like that, you could do that. Or if you wanted to lower this down, um, bring the ocean in a little closer to your building, you could do that. There's a lot of different things you can do here. Um, you can smooth out different terrain. Um, one of the things I want to talk about though is you also have the ability to paint different textures and also adjust the grass in here and there's a bunch of other things in here as well which I'll talk about in other videos but for this one I want to talk a little bit about this paint option 
what the paint option does is it gives you the ability to apply different textures to your ground. So let's say for example right out front of this building you decided that you didn't want this to be sand, you wanted to do there to be kind of a stone outcropping out here. Well, you can see how you can add that into your image really easily just by clicking and moving. You can see how that's painting that in. And you can adjust the tiling and uh, different things about that. And it's just really easy to make that change. If I wanted to take it back to sand, I could just click and paint the sand back in. So making a change is as, easily as, is as easy as selecting one of these. And notice that there are a whole bunch of different texture options in here. So I could select like this American stone and you could apply that in there if you wanted to. Um, there's a bunch of options in here. The other thing I wanna highlight is the ability to add grass. So this first option actually allows you to paint grass into your image. So let's say you wanted some grass out front you could just paint that in by clicking on this and then just clicking and dragging. And notice that there are multiple different kinds of grass in here as well. And so there's also other options in here so you can add like different landscapes. So you can set your presets so you can do like desert or farm or um, snow. You can select a bunch of different presets in there to make this look different ways for different scenes. Um, and so real quick, this button right here allows you to import stuff from OpenStreetMap. I'm going to make a video about that pretty soon I think. But the one I want to focus on here is the grass. And what you can do with the grass is you can actually adjust the size, the height, and also the wildness, or basically the spread of the grass across the area where you've painted this by clicking and dragging these sliders. So making that adjustment is really easy. And you'll notice as I zoom in, um, you can probably see this a little bit better. If I get down at the grass height, but you can adjust the height all those different things. So really easy to make that change, really easy to adjust that. You can also use these over here when you paint your grass to uh, add things like uh, flowers or rocks or leaves that get put in your gra grass as well. So that's kind of the theme for Lumion is just how many options there are for different things that you can do. You can also turn your grass on and off, which is great because there's a lot of different uh, polygons that are having to get rendered when your grass is on. So if you turn that off, then it's gonna be easier on your PC. And one thing to know is if you look up in the upper right hand corner, this will actually show you how many 3D points and trees and plants this is, um, this is having to render. So you can get an idea of how much of your PC is being used. And notice how when I turn my grass off, my frames per second goes way up because it's having to render way less of that. So you can see how with the grass on, it's 17.4 million 3D points. If I turn it off, then it's only 5.4 million. So maybe turn the grass off until you actually need it within your rendering. And I'm just gonna put this back to sand real quick. And you'll notice how easy making those changes is. So the materials tab actually lets you adjust different materials within, uh, within your scene. And so you see how whenever you select this, it basically tells you to mouse over a different uh, material and you can make adjustments to that. So for example, if I wanted to adjust this stone wall, I can just click on it and you can see how you get a number of different options for different things that you can do with the color. For this wall, you can also adjust the colorization. You can adjust how glossy materials are. You can adjust um, how much they reflect light. You can adjust how rough they look by adjusting the relief. And I think a lot of that's driven by the normal map, which you can apply normal maps to materials within Lumion. Um, you can also adjust the scale if you wanna make the materials larger or smaller. And then if you click the little down button here, there's other options in here as well if you wanna move these around. So you can move them up and down by adjusting the X, Y, and Z offsets. So you can really make a whole bunch of changes in here. You can adjust a lot of these different things. So you can adjust so you can rotate materials. Um, all of this stuff is editable for the different materials within Lumion. There's a bunch of other settings as well that I don't wanna get into too much. You could make these like an emitter if you wanted this to emit light. So that's great for like neon lights or stuff like that. Just a lot of different things. 
And one of the things I want to highlight is this button for weathering. So the weathering is really cool. What the weathering does is that actually allows you to adjust a slider and it'll actually apply kind of a weathered material or a weathered look to this. So you'll note that if I turn the weathering up, for example, um, on the corners, the corners round off a little bit more and they look a little bit more realistic. Like you'll notice when they come to a point like this, they're not super realistic looking, but if I drag the weathering over, you can see how that corner kind of gets a, a rounded off effect without actually adjusting the geometry. So that's pretty cool as well. So, and you can apply a bunch of different kinds of weathering maps to this, as well as things like foliage. So you can add like ivy on different walls, just so many different things you can adjust in here. So the other thing I wanna point out is you can bring in different materials from your material library. So let's say for example, that I wanted to adjust these weather boards, you could click on the material library button and you can look at all of the different materials that are actually built in to Lumion. So there's a ton of them and you'll notice some of them come from different places. So like for example, some of these came, came from polygon.com, which I've talked about before. That's a great, that's a great website for different textures. So you could adjust this so that it's more of a wood or a lot of different things. You can see how swapping out textures is actually really easy. So tons of things you can adjust with the materials. We'll talk more about those in the future as well. And then finally, I want to talk about the object section. So the object section allows you to actually bring things in and move them around within Lumion. And so if you look down here, there's a huge library of stuff in Lumion that you can use to bring things in. So for example, let's say I wanted to bring in a palm tree and put it right in front here. What I could do is I could actually select this and you'll notice there's a huge number of uh, different plants that you can bring in to Lumion. So in this case, let's say I wanted to bring in like this palm grove, I would just click on it and then I would click right here. And one of the cool things about this is how quickly you can adjust this. So let's say I wanted to make this bigger, for example. Um, I could just click on size object and I could click on my object and I just click and drag up and down. And you can see how that's adjusting the height. And some objects in here actually have different properties that you can adjust. You can see how I can adjust the color of this tree using the sliders. But bringing things in is really easy and the library is just uh, kind of ridiculous in how much stuff that's in here. But one thing that's really cool is if you adjust your shadows or you adjust your sun placement, you'll notice that your shadows adjust live as you go. So this is like real time, everything's updating as you go in here with your model. So, and like I said, there are a ton of different things. There's different transportation options. Like let's say you wanted to bring in a guy in a boat, for example, you could bring this guy in just like that really easily. You can click and move him. Rotate him. So adding all of that context and stuff within Lumion is really easy as well. So this is also the tool that you're going to use when you import actual models from SketchUp. So the way that you're going to do that is let's say we'll just kind of point at this area right here for right now. But basically the way this is going to work is you're actually going to import an object and you're going to use the option for import new model. And in this case, let's say that I wanted to bring in this red cottage by Paul Wall model that I've used in a rendering tutorial before. Um, it's gonna ask where you wanna put that. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at main. Uh, it's gonna ask if you wanna import animations. In this case, I'm gonna say no, and I'm gonna check the box. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna add that to my library, and then I can bring that in to this model. So you can see how I was actually able to drop this model into this point, this is actually a 3D warehouse SketchUp model. And it kind of works the same way as everything else where you can use like the materials section to pick different materials. You could replace that with like a Lumion material if you wanted to. You do a lot of different things, but that's how you're gonna import things into Lumion from SketchUp. So you can add in different effects. So let's say for example, we wanted to make like a nighttime view. Like let's say we were to go up here and let's say we wanted to add a fire pit. Well, what you could do is you could go into your outdoor options 
you could search for fire and you could bring in like this Japanese fireplace and place that right here and then whoops you could go into the effects section and within the effects section you can actually add a fire effect inside this fireplace. So if you were to add this fireplace, you can adjust kind of the area spread, but also how wide this is. And then if you were to come into your weather and bring your sun down, you can actually have a fire outside that's actually lighting some of your model within Lumion. And that was all very easy. And so I've just kind of scratched the surface of what you can do with this program. I'm very excited to cover it more, but leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. I just love to get your opinion on this program, what you thought about some of the features. I just love having that sketch up conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new sketch up content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.